Hiya. Um, I initially did this uh, Rye model um, and I wanted to add a bit of flair to the model so I decided to print with transparent resins um, and I wanted to colour the resin so I decided to use um, alcohol inks. I then had a lot of questions about this so I did a bit more research and it turns out there's a number of ways that you can, uh, one, print your transparent resin to ensure you get it as clear as possible. Um, but also you can dye um, you can dye the resin in a number of different ways and you can also dye it uh, during the print process as well. So I just wanted to create a quick video to discuss one, keeping your clear transparent resin as clear as possible um, in the curing process or post printing process. Um, two is how we can add effects and colours to clear transparent um, resin after it has been pr uh, printed. And three, just as a side note, how we can add those colours to um, transparent resin during the print process and at the end we're going to look to compare all of these just to see which one I guess we prefer. So as you can see from the Rye model I think it's added a lot of flair to it. Uh, what I've done here is I've used um, Elegoo translucent standard polymer resin. So a key caveat to mention here is that this is the only translucent resin I've used. Um, I have heard they're pretty much all the same in the sense there's no groundbreaking resin that is always translucent. It seems that the process of curing uh, and post-processing is what's really going to ensure that it stays translucent. Um, another few small things I just want to mention is that um, in regards to curing, I literally have a cardboard box with tin foil and some spinning trays. And I use a very cheap UV um, a UV lamp from a uh, a nail studio, so it's very very low UV lights um, and very very cheap setup. But I think it's worth just bearing that in mind. Um, and just highlighting in regards to the cleaning process, this is my IPA. It is ninety one percent. This is the acetone. And because I'm based in the UK, I can't get my hands on what they call mean green. Uh, so I've been using gunk as a degreaser. Um, it's just the one I can get my hands on at the moment. Um, so I just wanted to highlight some of the cleaning products I've used and the process I've used them in as well. So if we look at this board here, we have um, a number of the same model that has been printed. Um, so certain this number of the same print We've used, I've used the same translucent resin um, and essentially I just want to start comparing the different processes I've put, applied across the top. So from a discussion point, um, time on the bed is how long it sat on the print bed on the printer. So um, in some cases like here, uh, the print finished about four o'clock in the morning. I wasn't up until around nine, so maybe 10 o'clock was by the time I took it off the, off the bed. Um, so far, oh, I also have an Elegoo Mars Pro. Um, the key thing here is I don't think time on the bed makes any difference. My Elegoo Mars is um, it's not in direct sunlight. So I think if you were leaving a printer in direct sunlight um, and you were gonna leave it for a couple of hours, I worry that could impact the, the, the transparency of your resin. Uh, the next one was cure time. And this is by far the most impactful thing. Um, you can see from this one, sorry. I actually forgot about it and I left it in the UV chamber for eight hours and you can pretty much see it's turned entirely yellowed and orange. If you're trying to do maybe a fl um, what I classify as a cheap flame effect, um, yeah, just over cure your UV resin and you'll end up with this slightly yellowed effect. For everything else, um, I've kept the UV, um, the method to UV or no UV and everything under five minutes. From my experience, the moment it reached around about three minutes is when the yellowing started to appear. So now I'll go into the cleaning agents. As I mentioned, I had IPA at 91%, acetone and a general degreaser. The first thing I'll say is the greasy, degreaser did not work. Now I don't know about other forms, um, but I tried and it still was sticky and tacky. So I then had to run it through again with acetone. What I would say about the acetone versus IPA is that with acetone, I found that actually you didn't need to use IV, uh, UV lights. Um, I could literally do a, a run in the acetone and I would say it was ready to be dyed immediately. When I used it with the IPA, bearing again, it's 
I felt that um, it did need that minute or two of, of UV light to really create that final curing. But overall, I'd say the cleaning agent, as long as it's something stronger than your average degreaser, it seems sufficient to me. Print orientation is, from what I can see, irrelevant, other than if you're gonna try and do a bit of dyeing, i.e. you want the, uh, the effect to transition through a particular direction of the model. Um, and then finally now, I wanna to start to look at like what color types and things we can, I, I, can, I can apply to it. But realistically, I can say now, the only thing that has, that has come across this, this quick piece of testing is one, don't over cure it. I'd say three minutes maximum in the UV. Two, strongest cleaning agent seems to do the quickest job. Um, but be very clear, if you are using something like acetone, you wear gloves, you wear glasses, I have tongs and I treat it like it's acid. It is very dangerous stuff. So please do be careful. Um, but the, the, the point is, I would say here that my first print with the acetone um, without over curing, and I printed this way, this is my first print, down to the last print. One, I would say that the acetone is definitely the biggest, uh, the best way to clean it alongside um, zero to very little UV light. But two, I also was uh, filling up my vat, printing, and then, um, and then once it printed, I'd refill the vat. So I wasn't completely cleaning it out each time. And I personally think, excluding the um, overly burnt one, that there's a slight transition of it getting slightly darker as time's gone on. And I think that might be the reuse of the resin within the, within the vat. So if you really want to try and keep it as crystal clear as possible, I would measure out your vat uh, to the model that you want to print. Um, print it, clean it in the acetone, zero to one or two minutes of UV, um, and then clean your vat out and start again. And I think that's the best way you want to keep the most translucent view. One thing I will mention is we've had pretty terrible weather in the UK uh, the last few days, but I have read that if instead of the UV light, you put it in a bucket of water in a sunny day for a few minutes, because um, the light is spread perfectly across the model, something like this has a lot of dents, it, uh, it cures it a lot more evenly. If you put it under a UV light, particularly on a spinning platform, it picks out areas and creates darker shades, which is maybe not what you want. Um, so I have heard that the water method for UV is a lot better than the UV light itself. So I'm going to quickly touch upon this final piece. Um, so all of these have just been around getting as transparent resin as possible. This final piece is where I have now dropped in the, um, sorry, I've dropped in resin pigments into the UV resin during the printing process. And I started off, and we're going to come to this in a moment, I've started off with a blue, transitioning into a green, finally into a purple. So my first problem with this is for a seven to eight hour print, I then had to set alarms every two hours to come back to put drops in. Two, it was very hard to determine how much I needed to put in. And three, you can see by the time you get to sort of green and purple, the colours are overlaying on top of each other. So at the bottom, it's ended up being quite a dense colour, which I don't like. So I think the dropping into the resin and printing process should be kept for um, a clear to one colour transition. So if you just want to make one quick transition, you print half the model, you drop some resin pigments in, and you'll get a second colour of transition. So I'm going to personally say that if you want to use resin pig, or sorry, um, yeah, resin pigments, in the printing process, I would only do it with a, with a one color transition. Now, whether or not if you did maybe yellow to orange to red, it might work a bit better. Um, the other thing I'll say is by the time I got to the end, because I wasn't necessarily being mm, scientific with my measurements, um, I found one, it was too dark, and the resin I had left over was unusable. So again, it was about measuring it out perfectly. Uh, but if I'm honest, I'm not overly happy with this finish. And right at the end where it has become very dense in the, um, the pigments, um, it's actually had some, some uh, print fail issues as well. So maybe you can just see that gap there. So for the moment, I'm gonna forget about these two. Um, at the end of the day, that was just something I wanted to see if uh, the resin pigments would work in the printing process. So overall, where I am is 
If I wanted to print in transparent, I'd buy transparent resin. If I wanted to print in one transparent color, like a blue or a green, I'd actually buy that color of blue and green, blue or green transparent resin. If I wanted to create a transition of one color, I would buy the transparent resin and buy these resin pigments. Um, and if I felt like I wanted loads of different colors of transparent resin, I think I would go and buy the, the clear transparent resin, buy these resin pigments, and possibly even buy um, a couple of extra vats as well, so I can have some pre-made mixtures of colors and just be prepared to print with them. So that's where I am, but personally, I like the painting style. I like the fact here with Ryu, it, it really does blend from purple to green to blue, and you can really see all three colors quite clearly. Um, and I think that you can only have that kind of control with a paintbrush and through additional effects. So now I'm just going to use these and what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, purple, sorry, green and royal blue of the resin pigments and we've got the blueberry, violet and turquoise of the alcohol inks. I'm then going to mix each of them with water and IPA, so separately, and I'm going to do each one of these as a, um, as a test. For the Ryu, um, I mixed it with water and I used the alcohol ink. Um, I really like the effect, but I just want to see what other options there are. So uh, I'm just going to have a quick clean up, then I'm going to come back and we'll get the painting done. So I'm now looking at all of my transparent uh, resins. I've just taken out the two here um, that I intend to do, as you can see here, with ink. In fact, I'll take out all three. Um, and my aim is to start with purple, transition to green, and then end with blue. So, as I said, I want to focus on the inks first. So, what I would normally do is just add a few drops. Again, not too many, because you'll realise how much... So I'm painting a few. Um, but you'll realise how much these need to be diluted. Sorry if this isn't exciting, um, but again, just want to have that ready. And what I also have is my little pot of water. So for this first one here, I want to just do it with water without the IPA. So I'm going to start off, just get a big brush, pop it in to the blue. And what you're going to see, well, this one I'm assuming from the last one, it's going to come on very, very strong. So as soon as I put it on, I was like, oh, wow, that's way, way too heavy. I watered my brush off and I just started pushing it away. Okay. I also just realised that I meant to start with purple, so I apologise. I'll literally just go straight to the purple, lucky it's a dark enough colour. I'm just going to layer that over the blue and just build the purple up to the area where I want it to stop. Make sure it is as watery as possible, i.e. you've got everything coated. Now I'm just going to switch over to the green, uh, turquoise in this instance, sorry. And just making sure it's it's not too thick. And then finally onto the blue. Um, I did say I want to kind of keep the top of it as tr like fully translucent, so I won't actually go over the blue. Uh, for what I understand is um, once you've gone over the colour, there is no taking that colour. Well, I've been struggling to take the colours off. So um, there was a point where I went a bit too far with one of the blues, and I felt like it was too start a finish. Um, and then finally, what I did is right at the end, just for a finish, as I got a bit of the purple, I just kind of layered it through, just so it had a little bit of a purple glint as we went along. So hopefully you can see that now as it's drying. Uh, but I will put that back into my water section. And I will now move my water out of the way, and I have a little pot of IPA here. Um, this is not something that I've ever done before, um, but I did read that... Um, IPA has a better evaporating property and it leaves less streaks with ink when you're painting with it. So um, I thought, again, it's, it's worth a try. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on these two, but instead I'm going to replace the water with ink.
So now I can wait for those to dry. Um, You can see there, for these two, I haven't got the same uh, crystal clear end. Um, and the reality is, if you don't prepare for that, I'm not going to be able to get those crystal clear again at the end. So I do feel like you don't always have as much control, but you can get a lot more um, variety in, in the finish. So now, I'm basically going to do exactly the same as what I did before. Get these ones out of the way. But this time, I'm going to be using the pigment paints. Hopefully now you can see all of those. Um, I've kept this one, uh, I've left this one because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my favourite out of all of these and then I'm going to replicate the process on this to see if it makes any difference to overcooking a UV piece or if by colouring it, you know, you haven't lost any or wasted any resin. So I'll wait for this to dry and then I'll come back. Right, so um, they're all dry. Uh, I just want to make one point that on this one where I've used the uh, IPA and ink, um, I just wanted to do a test where it felt a bit, little bit weak, um, <clears throat> like the colour hadn't covered very well. And I didn't have enough guts to do it with the Ryu, but I wanted to just basically see after it dried, just reapply exactly the same process. So I've ridden the times two there. Um, I just wanted to be transparent and say this one I have done a second time, so I didn't like the coverage. <clears throat> so as a quick overview, um, I think it's quite obvious one thing, um, if again, just bear in mind the inks versus the pigments. Um, I'd say the ink with water, you can see that there's a bit of a, I guess, speckly effect. Um, of something that I did notice in certain period, uh, certain parts of the Ryu model, and I feel like it's just where the, the water's uh, dried. The, I'll show you shortly that the clear coat does help this, um, but as I said, I did my research and it's clear that I think IPA does resolve this 90 plus percent. The interesting thing was the first time I painted over these with pigments, I was surprised by, as I was painting over it, how glossy it, what it's become. I thought I'd put on quite a thin coat, uh, but it turns out it's not as even as I, I thought I'd applied. Um, certain areas, I think, have nearly lost their translucency. I don't know if you can see under the light there. Um, so at least pigment with water, really not happy with. Uh, pigment IPA, you can see it's probably my favourite one. I think you can see how the purples work through the colours. It hasn't completely uh, shifted over. But there are one or two points where I think it's slightly flaked, which is a bit disappointing. Um, now the, 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 sorry, that was the ink and the IPA. This is the pigment and the IPA. And again, my only concern is there are certain points that become, become quite strong um, and over glossy. Here I've done the pigment and IPA, but I've done it twice. And uh, I think it, going forward, if I was to do it, I would do two even thinner coats than this because I feel like I've slightly lost as much translucency as I'd want if I just compare, sorry, the initial IPA with one coat. Um, but at the same time it has a much stronger coverage um, and m a lot less patchy areas. So there's part of me that so far I think that the IPA with ink applying two very thin coats is so far the very very clear winner. Overall, um, I'm going to say that the IPA and ink, which seems to be everything that was I read online anyway, um, but it does clearly seem to be the best process. For me now, it's about getting it into two thin coats so I can get this kind of finish, but maybe a little bit more translucency. But I know that um, the, none of these now have been clear coated. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one from each. So I've got my um, IPA and ink. I've got my um, resin pigment during printed. Um, I've then got a pigment with IPA um, and I'll use both of them with water. So I'm gonna take all of these five and spray them with a clear coat um, and then we can just come back and have a comparison. So I've given it a couple of hours for the uh, clear coat to dry. Pretty much dry. Um, I'd say give it a good few, probably three or four hours if you want it to be solidly dry. Um, but just for the sake of the comparison, um, I think it's really clear, as I said before, if you want a uh, misted or frosted glass effect, you just can't add the clear coat. 
Um, for me, something like Ryu's Energy Swirls, I feel like Energy Swirls is more like a mist. Um, I feel like if you add the, gl the gloss effect, it becomes more like a water. Um, but it, it gives you both options. Uh, the one main thing is it gives you the UV protection. So I just want to highlight a few things. Firstly, on the one where I put the resin pigments um, during the print process, it's quite interesting actually that adding the um, adding the gloss seems to really hide some of the sort of the stark transitions and actually brought the colour out a lot more. Out a lot more, but overall, I still wouldn't recommend it. Um, so just get this out of the way. Uh, Next for me was kind of comparing the ink um, and IPA, ink and IPA. Please bear in mind this was one coat and this was two. Um, but if we can see through the light, I think that without adding the clear, uh, the clear coat, you can see like some real nice effects of how the, the purple sits over some of these colours. I think the clear coat slightly hides that. But so overall, I'd say that the, um, it seems that the best outcome for me is the two coats of... IPA and ink. It just depends on what kind of finish you want, whether you want it to have uh, more of a frosted finish or you want it to have more of a clear gloss finish. Um, as I said, I think the clear gloss adds um, more longevity with UV protection, particularly if you plan on having it in the sun. Um, and as I said, it does really bring out the colours as well, but I feel like it hides some of the shading and shadows that you may have created with, um, uh, with, with the inks. But overall, I'm going to say for the sake of control, for the sake of hiding some of these little imperfections that I think you get from both ink and water, um, the clear coat seems to be the winner. The IPA seems to be the winner over water um, and the ink seems to be the winner over pigments. So I guess now uh, I just want to highlight one other thing. Uh, as I mentioned, I was going to pick my favourite one. Um, so I said I was going to pick my uh, favourite one and repeat the process on the print that was already yellowed. So if you remember, I had one that I'd left under the UV for eight hours. I have essentially replicated the process here of two coats of IPA and the clear coat. So I just put those next to each other. I think the yellowing is fractionally visible in certain areas, but if I'm completely honest, I wouldn't throw a piece away. Even if I was to extremely yellow it like I had there, if I knew I was gonna coat the entire thing, I would still paint it and I don't think there is much difference between the two at all. So that was just, it's a nice to know. Just as a quick recap, uh, so leaving it on the, the print bed after the print is finished, it doesn't really matter how long you leave it if it isn't in direct sunlight. Um, curing time is probably the most impactful thing to keep transparent resin transparent or clear. Um, so I would recommend no more than three minutes of curing under UV lamp. Um, just want to highlight, I use this nail salon thing, so very, very low UV lights anyway, and I only did three minutes. Um, and even furthermore, if you live in a warm country with, well, anyway, with sun, um, I'd recommend a bucket of water and just popping it in for a few minutes in the sun. Um, but that is contingent on that you don't use degreasers and you use a solid cleaning tool like IPA or acetone. Um, I found that degreasers didn't clean it enough that it would require more UV light to, to properly cure it. But in doing so, you're going to yellow the transparency. So it is what it is. Um, print orientation, unless you're planning to use pigments and actually create a transition yourself, the orientation didn't seem to matter. And from what I can see, uh, if you use pigments during the post uh, sort of painting after it's been printed process, uh, pigments seem to create a stronger, glossier finish and they don't seem to allow uh, mixing of the two, they seem to just mix and become another colour. Whereas inks, they seem to really sort of overlay, they're much more watery or inky. Um, using water with, with them seems to create an issue where it can dry and create some patchy effects. IPA seems to be less of an issue. Um, I am using 91% IPA and I've seen a lot of people use 99 and not seem to have that, that uh, drying issue. So maybe that's it. Maybe I need to add a third coat. I'm not sure yet. Um, and I've also looked online and there are other options like doing IPA dips and things like that. But realistically, I think for the sake of control, for the sake of the cost of a quick pack of alcohol inks, um, and I assume most people have some IPA in their house if you've got a resin printer, um, I think that's your best option. Um, or as I said, if you're only looking to print with one colour, buy it in that colour. If you like multiple colours but each part is only in one colour, 
get a bunch of bats, buy the clear resin and just dye it yourself. So I guess they're your options. Um, I hope it was of some or some use. Um, and it's definitely something that I'm going to use going forward. I think all any model adding a little bit of transparent resin and some colour really adds a lot of flair and just a cool artistic finish. So yeah, hope it was useful. Um, thanks. Still in?